Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today we're going to look at some more tips and tricks on sanding and sandpaper things. Uh, but before we get to that, what I want to do is I want to thank everybody, hundreds and hundreds of people, uh, went to my Amazon store and had a look around. A few people bought a few things and I appreciate that, thank you very much. Uh, but there's a few people who couldn't find the store and that's my fault and I apologize to you. Um, what I should have said in the last couple of videos or so, um, I said that the link was in the description box. What I should have said, the link to Woodwork Web is in the description box and when you go to Woodwork Web um, there's lots of links there that will take you to the Amazon source so you can check it out. Um, if you buy something that's wonderful but mostly I wanted people to be able to go there and see because I get so many questions on the products that I use and the finishes that I use and all that sort of thing so you'll be able to check that out now. Okay let's get on with these sanding tips and tricks. In the last video where I was making the jig for putting holes for shelving brackets and I had to take this doweling and sand it down and I didn't show you what I did and you know what um, it's a, it's a little trick that I've used for years and years you know you can take sandpaper and wrap it around doweling but you know what it never really seems to work very often when I get doweling some of the doweling is not very good quality it's not really round it's kind of oval and depending often I would go like this and and just kind of uh, sand that down and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't uh, but what I found is uh, these little things and I just use um, sometimes I cut them up myself or you can buy uh, like tongue depressors and honestly you just sometimes I'll double side you just use some double sided glue or double sided tape rather and put some sod, some sandpaper on there at, at different colors for different grades that I have and when you're then when I'm sanding this you get a nice even sand but you know what what I do is put it in my drill so and that's what I did with this one is put it in my drill but look at this you know when you spin it now you have a really nice flat surface and you can run it along and I found that this gives me a much better finish a much more even finish if you sometimes when you're doing it this way it still gets kind of lumpy and oval and it doesn't work properly so there's a quick little trick but look at where I get the pieces of sandpaper from check this out a few videos ago I showed you how to make these little sanding blocks with the cut down there and you just use it and I have them in different, I use different size grits in them and there's an old um, sanding block that I that I still use as well but you know what when you're using sanding blocks don't you always get sandpaper that's always good on usually at least one edge and I'll often turn it around so that I try and use it as much as I can but you know what you still always seem to get sandpaper that has one good spot on it and what I do with that for when I'm sanding dowels or you know wanting to make some of these little basically like a little file little sanding file um, I take it over to my cutter and you saw this I'll put a link to that as well in my last video and I've got a little line there so that I know and these are just three quarters of an inch you could make these yourself out of just some thin wood um, and cut it like that and then I just take it and sometimes I'll double side it usually I'll glue it because I find gluing works just carpenter's glue works a lot better um, and then you can just um, uh, clamp a couple of them together uh, to keep the glue in there um, but you know what a great way of using up sandpaper but not only using up good sandpaper that you would otherwise throw out but now you end up with these little sort of sanding files uh, that you can use for all sorts of things depending on what I'm doing uh, sometimes I'll use these rolls of of sandpaper and they come in long rolls like that and I just have a wooden box that I keep them in you know what it's nothing fancy they just sit in I don't even have a a, a hub for any of this you don't even really need it uh, and this has a basically a hacksaw an old hacksaw blade you can see that it's worn but for this it's great uh, and you just flip the the um, 
these sandpaper rolls down uh, and you can just tear them off uh, and I you know it's quick and easy storage you don't have to worry about where stuff is and I keep it the grits there's 80 100 and 180 so that I always know what they are so just a quick way of storing rolls of sandpaper very often when I'm making doors uh, or even windows I need to sand this area a little bit and you know you can use this kind of a sander or this one the problem with these is sometimes you they'll get to the point where they you're not holding them absolutely perfect and they're rocking and here's a little trick to do um, just get yourself any old flat piece of wood, in this case it's just plywood, uh, and a little bit of sandpaper and again you can use some old sandpaper and if you, this is just, so just holding it like that and then get a little piece of plywood like this and this is a, basically a steadier and I'll put it around the back so you can see it but basically all you do is put that around the back and I'm just holding it with my hand, I'm not even uh, fastening it and now this is not going to wiggle because the back here is holding it vertical and now when I sand this I'm not going to get any rounded corners and I'm going to get a nice flat sanding job here which is exactly what I want so very quick easy way of sanding edges what you're looking here is a board that I glued up a couple of weeks ago and I haven't uh, you can clearly see the glue line there and Normally I'll scrape that off and I haven't done that yet, but after I scrape that off sometimes I'll use my small little belt sander and I'll go against the grain uh, and then sometimes with the grain to try and get that board flat. But if you don't even have a belt sander, of course many of us have these random orbital sanders and they work great, but sometimes we tip them up on end, especially where there's glue lines and you have to be careful that you don't put too big a uh, a, a gouge in your board uh, even with your sander because you, it can become very visible uh, depending on the finish and the kind of light and the best way to check that of course is with a square and putting a square across your board to make sure that you see where the highs and the low spots is a great way of keeping your board working to keep your board as flat as you can and what I like to do is use a pencil wherever I find a low spot I will put a pencil mark in there so that I know that that area is not an area that I want to work on and if there's a high spot I will put X's on a high spot so that I know that is a place that I want to work. So you can see very easily, I'll tip that board up, when I'm working on a board you can see, hopefully you can see, uh, X's and, and squiggles or circles of where holes are. So these are holes and these are high spots. And that's a trick that I use when I'm working on boards to try and get them as level as I can. Well, I've just taken a moment to drag up my reciprocating sander and that's not what I want to show you. What I want to show you is this little product. It's called a sanding eraser. It's probably called other names as well. Uh, but what it does is it cleans the grit out of sandpaper on belts and you can use it on, on hand uh, sanders, random orbital sanders. And as you know, there's two things that will take away the how well a sander works or how well the sanding is working. Uh, the first thing is of course it clogs up with sawdust, we all know that. The other thing of course is that the grit wears down after a time it wears off and comes off. This can't help the grit but what it can do is it cleans out the sawdust. So what it does is it extends the life of your belts or your drums uh, by cleaning out that sawdust and giving you a little bit better job of sanding. Uh, so let me show you how it works. It's, it actually works very very well. I've been using this for years and years um, but not a lot of people know about it. I don't know why it hasn't uh, gained more favor but let me show you how it works. So basically you just hold it against the disc or in this case the belt uh, and just watch you'll be able to see very easily how it cleans it. Now 
Now you probably won't find this at your big box store. Uh, you probably have to go to a, like a specialty wood store or something to find that, but uh, maybe something you want to check into next time you're uh, checking out tools. Well, that concludes my video for today. I hope you found some things that are interesting and uh, maybe give you some ideas for your workshop. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.